Welcome to worship this evening. We're glad that you're joining us because we're still living with COVID-19 precautions. I will not be painting your forehead with ashes this year. Instead, we have handed out stickers with a cross on them. I suggest when the time comes that you place them on your clothing over your heart when we remember that we are all made of ashes and dust. As we worship today, please keep your mask on if you're still here in the building and sing softly. If you're at home, please sing your heart out. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you are able. Even at home, stand up. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us ever walk with Jesus. To see the depths of his love. To behold the gift of his forgiveness. To gaze upon the heights of his grace. To marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. We walk with Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. Because Passover is coming. And the Son of Man will be crucified. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. You may be seated. Magnificent and merciful God, because I walk into dark and dangerous places, hear me as I confess my sins. My feet take me to places of compromise and sinful ambition. My heart lingers in places of lust and lies. My words take me to places of anger, rage, and hatred. My ears delight in going to places of gossip, deceit, and ridicule. My mind takes me to places of selfishness and pride. My eyes lead me to places of envy 
and greed. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the good news. Jesus walked to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane, Gabbatha, and Golgotha for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through, the, through, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In preparation for worship, you received a sticker of a cross made of ashes. I suggest you place the sticker on your clothes over your heart as a sign of your repentance. As you do so, reflect on these words. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Feel mine. Let us pray. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, send forth your Holy Spirit that this Lent we may ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits lure. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, time for children to come up. Thank you for coming up. So today, we're talking about the word den. Den, den. And today, it's a special day called Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. So related with den, we talk about how sometimes the choices that we make Oh, not good. Really, you thin, you thin, I thin, dad thin. So we're going to talk about what that means, okay? So, we see here, what is that? So the goal is perfect and hit right on the mark. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you two to stand up. I'm going to give you a bit right here. I'm going to pretend to throw at the board here. Oh. 
Are you shy? Hold on. Shy throw. You want to get in the middle. You want to hit the middle. Okay, one more time, like that. Mm -mm. More time. It's your turn. Oh. Hey. You have to. M yeah. You have to chant it later to practice, okay? But my point in the message today, what? Is that we miss the mark. So we try, 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 middle, get? We didn't get, right? Right, we miss, 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 miss. So then means we miss the mark. But the good news, we have Jesus. We'll wait, and we'll talk about that in the next couple of weeks, okay? All right, shall we pray? Gracious Lord, we all miss the mark. To help us repent and think about all the choices that we make as we try to look to you for the way to follow. Help us achieve and look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you in the beginning of month. Shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all of the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man should take a lamb according to your father's house, a lamb for household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor should take it according to the number of the person. According to each, what if you can eat shall make you account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male, a year old. You can take this from the sheep or the goat, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. When the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill the lamb at twilight, then they should take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, wolfed it over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted. If she is hard and light in its inner part, and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fasting and your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in a haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt. I shall actually do judgment. I am the Lord. The blood should be a sign for you, and the house is where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. 
Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Your bragging isn't good. Don't you know that a tiny grain of yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise? Clean out the old yeast so you can be a new batch of dough. Given that you're supposed to be unleavened bread, Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed, so let's celebrate the feast with unleavened bread of honesty and truth, not with the old yeast and with the yeast of evil and wickedness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the place of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there will be an uproar among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I have, um, can you hand me the paper? I usually read the, do the sermon from a PowerPoint. No, the, the, the one with pictures on it, the top one. But the sermon, the computer has um, closed itself, so. I've lived in Florida since 2008. We live inland on the Central Ridge, so fairly high ground as Florida elevation goes. So far, we have easily survived several hurricanes with little to no damage. Traveling around in 2017 after Hurricane Irma moved off north, I was stunned to see the damage done to inland areas. Photos of places I didn't drive to told me I was better off staying home. People living in Ocala, Summerfield, and the villages knew that they were stuck in a bad place, a very bad place. Lent begins today with ashes, and with it we begin a sermon series called Places of the Passion. Using Matthew's Gospel, we will walk with Jesus to places like the Upper Room, the Garden of Gethsemane, Pilate's Judgment Hall, and the Hill of Golgotha. These are places of the passion. Today, we walk with Jesus to the city of Jerusalem, which turns out to be a very bad place for him. Matthew records five teaching blocks of Jesus patterned on his gospel after, pattering his gospel after the Torah, the first five books in the Old Testament. Five times, Matthew writes, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, He says it for the last time in Matthew 26, 1. What's the point? Matthew is finishing his gospel. He's wrapping things up. It's all coming to an end, and it will end with a massive storm. The sky is growing dark and cloudy. The wind is beginning to howl. Soon the rain will be coming down like holy buckets. How so? He said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. This will be Jesus' last Passover in Jerusalem. He is about to be crucified, dead, and buried. Jesus is struck in a a stuck in a bad place, a very bad place, with a storm ready to hit. We all know what it feels like to be stuck in a vulnerable, exposed place when a storm hits. Are you raising teenagers? 
Did you get cut from the team? Did you lose the love of your life? Are finances tight? What about your health? Is old age getting the best of you? Has a doctor used the C word with you, cancer? How has COVID-19 affected you? Does anyone remember a, a soap opera called Secret Storm? A secret storm is a kind of storm, uh, a secret kind of storm because we feel so all alone. It's a secret storm because we're so ashamed and so embarrassed and so af ashamed that afraid we don't tell a soul. Most of life's storms come and go. There's another kind of storm, though, that comes, but it never goes. It hammers and hounds. It brings with it hell and high water. Thunder roars. Lightning zigzags across the sky. What am I talking about? It's the storm called sin. Sin comes and it never goes. What does sin look like? Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there will be an uproar among the people. Joseph Caiaphas is the high priest. He held the office in AD 18 to 36, far longer than anyone else in this era, indicating his skill and his political shrewdness. Caiaphas knows that a public arrest of Jesus will be very risky. There would most certainly be an uproar among the people because they believed that Jesus was a mighty prophet. Caiaphas couldn't have killed Jesus during the Passover feast, but he couldn't wait until after Passover because then Jesus would probably leave Jerusalem and go back to Galilee and escape again. Why? Are the chief priests and elders plotting to kill Jesus? They were losing their place. They had the most important places in the synagogues and in the marketplace. They wore long tassels. They gave a tenth of their possessions. They fasted twice a week. They prayed long prayers. They could take their esteemed place in the community and thank God that they were not in the place of other people, tax collectors and sinners. The chief priests and elders had a place of power and respect until Jesus came. Jesus' ministry attracted crowds. His words touched hearts. His hands opened eyes. His presence brought about a life that was full of grace and truth. Then what happened? The chief priests and elders began to lose their place. That's why they gathered to plot and prepare for Jesus' death. Do you see what sin is? Sin is holding on to my place. Sin, sin is not allowing Jesus first place. And sin is making sure that others stay in their place. We're not that much different from the chief priests and elders. Eventually, sin brings with it our tornadic winds and life-threatening lightning that destroys everything. What is Jesus' response to our sin? Does he condemn us? Does he lock us up and throw away the key? Do you remember what Jesus says? You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be, crucif will be delivered up to be crucified. Jesus walks to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. At Golgotha, Jesus walks into the storm. In 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. What does that look like? Jesus willingly places himself in the middle of the storm, the tornado of all tornadoes, Listen, can you hear him? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today you will be with me in paradise. I thirst. It is finished. Are you stuck in a bad place? Jesus was stuck in a bad place. Are you hurting? Jesus was hurting. Are you bleeding? Jesus bled. 
Are you gasping for, do you feel like you're gasping for air? Jesus gasped for air. Are you crying? Jesus cried. Is your heart breaking? Jesus' heart was absolutely broken. What does it all mean? It means we are not alone in the storm. We are never alone in our storm. To the father haunted by his angry outbursts, Jesus speaks. To the husband and wife who barely talk to each other, Jesus speaks. To all of us exposed to the constant storm of sin, Jesus speaks. Listen, can you hear him? What does he say? He says, I love you. What should we do when we're stuck in a bad place, a massive, life-threatening, Category 5 kind of storm, when it looks as though everything is going to be wiped off the map? Should we panic, pout, pretend? Should we freak out, have our 19th nervous breakdown? Do something we'll regret for the rest of our life? No, no, and no. God knows how to get people safely through the storm. Isn't that the message of Passover? God doing whatever it takes to get Israel safely through their unpredictable, ferocious, and hellish storm in Egypt. There was Pharaoh with his whips and bricks and bag of tricks. There was the Red Sea, which looked like a dead end. And then there were the horses and chariots. What happened? Israelites walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. God knows how to get God's people safely through the storm. Isn't that the message of the Passover meal as well? With his true body and blood, Jesus takes us from a stormy place to another place, a place of his peace and his presence, a place to lay our burdens down, a place to receive forgiveness and to be made new. Jesus has reserved our place, a place at his table, just for you. Amen. Onward in Christ, footsteps treading, pilgrims here, our home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do God's bidding, and so we pray. Jesus, you will deliver us from every storm, so we lift our prayers and raise our petitions to you. Lord, attend to our prayer. Deliver us from pride and arrogance, lest we fail to acknowledge our sins 
and confess them. Lord, attend to our prayer. Deliver the world from the enemies of peace and from injustice, and give us good and faithful leaders to protect the unborn and promote virtue. Lord, attend to our prayer. Deliver the erring from the darkness, the doubting from their uncertainty, and the wandering from their ways, and return them to you. Lord, attend to our prayer. Deliver us from the terror of death and the grave. Lord, attend to our prayer. Deliver us from selfish desire, from the tyranny of things, and from the wasteful use of resources you have entrusted to our care. Lord, attend to our prayer. Deliver us from ingratitude for all your mercies and restore our hearts to hope and joy. Lord, attend to our prayer. Jesus, deliver us and bring us to the table of your body and blood. Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites us to walk with him to Jerusalem, a place of great suffering and a place of great love. We will walk with Jesus all the way, to the empty tomb, and to resurrection victory. Let us ever walk with Jesus. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.